Honorable members, I have a ruling to render. And I do, as I do so, I order Mr. Simwetwa MP, Member of Parliament for Choma Central, Parliamentary Constituency, to stand by his seat. Honorable members, the House will recall that on Tuesday, 25th February 2020, when Honorable O.P. Mwansa MP, Minister in the Office of the Vice President, was rendering a ministerial statement, and Mr. M. Jerry, Member of Parliament for Livingstone, parliamentary constituency was about to ask a follow-up question. Honorable Jacob Pata MP raised the following point of order, and I quote, Sir, after the Vice President's question time, on Friday, Honorable Mwetua decided to go to Diamond TV's Costa program and attacked her honor, the vice president, regarding an answer she gave in response to a question asked by another member of parliament, Honorable Mwetwa wrote on that, Honorable member's question, to attack her honor, the vice president, in the media. Is it therefore in order to attack her honor, the vice president, by calling her shallow and shameful for linking gas attacks to regime change. Sir, I need your ruling, and I'm going to lay the paper on the table. End of quote. Honorable members, in my immediate response, I reserved my ruling in order to familiarize myself with alleged publication and also reflect on the matter. I've since studied the matter, and I'm now ready to render my ruling. The point of order raises the issue of a member attacking another member's freedom of speech and debate outside the House. Honorable members, the freedom of speech and debate in the House is a fundamental privilege guaranteed to members of Parliament and our law and parliamentary practice and procedure. The following authorities attest to the preceding propositions. First, Section 3 of the National Assembly Powers and Privileges Act, Chapter 12 of the Laws of Zambia, provides as follows, and I quote, there shall be freedom of speech and debate in the Assembly, such freedom of speech and debate shall not be liable to be questioned in any court or place outside the assembly. Second, asking May on parliamentary practice, 24th edition, states at page triple two as follows, and I quote, subject to the rules of order in debate, a member may state whatever he thinks fit in debate. However offensive it may be to the feelings or injurious to the character of individuals and is protected by parliamentary privilege from any action for defamation as well as from any other question or molestation. Third, eminent authors on parliamentary practice and procedure, Emwen Kau and S.L. Shadka, in their book entitled Practice and Procedure of Parliament, seventh edition, state as follows at page 304, and I quote, it is a breach of privilege and contempt of the House to make speeches or to print or publish any libels reflecting on the character or proceedings of the House or its committees or 
any member of the house for or relating to his character or conduct as a member of parliament. Speeches and writings reflecting on the house or its committees or members are punished by the house as a contempt on the principle that such acts would tend to obstruct the houses in the performance of their functions by diminishing the respect due to them. End of quote. Fourth, Audrey O'Brien and Mark Bosk in the book entitled House of Commons Procedure and Practice, second edition, state at page 108 as follows. And I quote, members are entitled to go about their parliamentary business undisturbed. They are assaulting, menacing, or insulting of any member on account of his behavior during a proceeding in parliament is a violation of the rights of parliament. Any form of intimidation of a person for or on account of his behavior during a proceeding in parliament could amount to contempt. End of quote. Honorable members, in line with parliamentary practice and procedure, and in accordance with the rules of natural justice, the Office of the Clerk of the National Assembly wrote to Mr. Simwetwa MP, requesting him to state his side of the story on the matter. Further, since the point of order alleged that Mr. Simwetwa MP made the alleged statement on the Diamond TV's Costa program on which he featured, the Office of the Clerk wrote to Diamond Television to request for the video recording of the said Costa program. Also, the House may wish to note that the mass newspaper, edition number 1206, for Tuesday, 25th February 2020, published an article on the said Costa program entitled, and I quote, Winner Shallow, Shameful to Link Gas Attacks to Regime Change, Dash Mwetwa, end of quote. In this article, the following statements were attributed to Mr. Simwetwa MP. One, UPND Deputy Spokesperson Cornelius Mwetwa says it is shameful and shallow for Vice President Inonge Wina to insinuate that gassers could be agitated for regime change. Two, if anyone is thinking about taking this opportunity because of gassing, say no, let's change the regime, like the Vice President said on the floor of the House, that no, this gassing, some people want regime change. That was shallow for the Vice President of the country. Shallow and shameful, Mwetwa exclaimed. In this regard, the Office of the Clerk wrote to the mass newspaper requesting them to confirm whether or not the statements alleged to have been made by Mr. Simwetwa MP were correctly attributed to him. Honorable members, in his response to the letter from the Office of the Clerk, Mr. Simwetwa MP denied attacking the persona of our owner, the Vice President, as alleged in the point of order, by calling her shallow and shameful. In his letter of response, it reads as follows. Dear Madam, re point of order, by Honorable J. Kapata MP, Minister of Lands and Natural Resources. And I quote, I acknowledge receipt of your letter dated 27th instant, and not the contents contained therein. I am, however, constrained to give a meaningful and reasoned response to your letter in the absence of a specific charge tabulating the rules, laws that I violated through the statement I'm alleged to have made. Yeah. I'm fully aware that citizens in our democratic dispensation are permitted to express opinions on statements issued by national leaders, both in the house and outside. I wish to further advise that while the point of order, as well as your letter allege, that I attacked the persona 
of the vice president by calling her shallow and shameful. At no time did my statement refer to her persona, but rather to the statement that she uttered. Yours faithfully, Mr. Simwetwa, MP, Choma Central Parliamentary Constituency. End of quote. Further, Diamond Television supplied the video recording of the Costa program, which featured Mr. Mwetwa, MP, as requested. The footage revealed that Mr. C. Mwetwa, MP, in discussing the gassing situation in the country, uttered the following statement, and I quote, if they want Dununa reverse like they did in 2011, they did in 2015, 2016, it's their choice. We will continue to beg them that there's a better alternative that can deliver this country, and if they don't agree with us, who are we to force them? But we will not say no. Now there's gassing. Let's remove this government. No. We want 2021 elections to come. If anyone is thinking about taking this opportunity because of gassing, no. Let's change the regime. Like the vice president said on the floor of the house, no, we know this gassing because some people want regime change. Yeah, yeah. That was shallow of a vice president of a country. Shallow and shameful. End of quote. Furthermore, the mass newspaper, despite several reminders, did not respond to the letter from the office of the clerk. Honorable members, in the point of order, Honorable J. Kapata MP alleged that Mr. Simwetwa MP had tacked her honor, the vice president, regarding a statement she made on the floor of the house by describing her as shallow and shameful for linking the gas attacks to regime change. In his written response, Mr. Simwe to her MP denied describing her honor, the vice president, as shallow and shameful. However, Mr. Mwetwa's MP, however, Mr. Mwetwa MP admitted having used the words shallow and shameful, he further explained that he used the words shallow and shameful in re reference to the statement of our honor, the vice president, contrary to the point of order which he alleged that he attacked the persona of our honor, the vice president, by describing her shallow and shameful. Honorable members, it is self-evident from the written response tendered by Mr. C. Mwetwa MP, as well as the footage obtained from Diamond Television that indeed Mr. Mwetwa MP described the vice president as shallow and shameful. To put it succinctly, honorable members, the article by the mass newspaper and the footage obtained from Diamond Television depicts crystal clear that Mr. Mwetwa MP did in fact say that, and I quote, that was shallow of the vice president of the country, shallow and shameful, end of quote. I find this statement was Mr. Mwetwa's estimation of her honor, the vice president, and therefore an attack on her persona based on what she said on the floor of the house. The utterance by Mr. Mwetwa MP also amounted to denigrating her honor, the vice president, on account of her conduct of business during a proceeding of parliament. This was a clearly a violation of rights of parliament as envisaged by the learned authors Audrey O'Brien and Mark Bosk in their book entitled House of Commons Procedure and, Pro Procedure and Practice referred to above. 
Further, the description of our honor, the vice president, as shallow and shameful, was demeaning and disrespectful to her as a person and also to the office of vice president and leader of government business in the House, both positions that she holds. I must state here that I've always counseled honorable members on numerous occasions that it is important for members to accord respect for one another. And moreover, for her honor, the vice president, granted that she holds the second highest position in the land. Honorable members, in view of the foregoing, I find that Mr. Simwe to MP to have been out of order in breach of parliamentary privilege and in contempt of the House. In view of the foregoing, I have decided to admonish him in accordance with Section 28.1b of the National Assembly Powers and Privileges Act, Cap 12 of the Laws of Zambia. I will now address you, Mr. Simwetwa, MP. Mr. Simwetwa, MP, your description of our honor the Vice President as shallow and shameful amounted to a personal attack on our honor the Vice President. This is because the words shallow and shameful were deployed to describe her honor the vice president and in view of the position she holds as vice president of the Republic of Zambia and leader of government business in the house, your description of her in those terms were demeaning and highly disrespectful. As a long serving member of this August house, it is most unfortunate that you conducted yourself in the manner you did. And your misconduct has the potential of lowering the integrity and decorum of this house. Both as a honorable member, your conduct should be above reproach, both in and outside the house. The house is in this regard extremely displeased with your conduct. I expect that in future you will abide by the rules of the house and avoid such misconduct. A repetition of such misconduct would definitely attract a stiffer penalty. You may proceed to tender your apology. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, for inviting me to this house. I was last year in March. And thank you, Mr. Speaker, for asking me to come and apologize for a statement I made in reference to the statement made by Her Honor the Vice President in what I believe was in furtherance of my enjoyment of my freedom of speech as entrenched in the Bill of Rights of the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia. Mr. Speaker, asking me to apologize is like asking me to stop breathing. I made it abundantly clear to your, to your committee Honorable that member, I... take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. You have been advised of the proceedings, and I believe you were approached by the clerk of the National Assembly, and you are not the first one requested to apologize in the circumstances that I have outlined. So I still give you the liberty to follow a very well-established procedure for tendering an apology. Honorable member for Choma Central. Mr. Speaker, the person who should apologize, the Vice President, for misleading the nation that we, the opposition, are conducting Honorable member for casting. Choma, take a seat. Is it your position that you've refused to apologize? I can't apologize no, no, for enjoying no. my freedom of speech. It's, it's not me, Mr. Question. Speaker. This is the reason a why we continue Take in this seat. house. Take a no seat. way. Take a seat. No way. Punish Take me for seat. what I have done wrong, not for no wrong Take doing. A no. Seat. Take your seat. It's a very simple question that I've posed to you. There's nothing like this. 
either you apologize or you don't, and then we proceed. We can't spend the, the rest of our time on this. Either you accept to apologize or you refuse. It's as simple. You don't have to offer any explanation. Mr. Speaker, I communicated to management yesterday that I can't apologize for no wrong. So you have refused. I am not apologizing. Take a seat. Take a seat. So for the record, Honorable Mwetwa, Member of Parliament for Choma Central, has refused to apologize to our honor, the Vice President. We'll proceed. I honor the Vice President who will now indicate business of the House for next week.